ready. Whirlpool Gold Cup sent on their way from the 3200 meter. Races don't get longer than the 3200 meters of the Whirlpool Gold Cup. The marathon of flat racing is just up Future Pearl Street and the timing looks perfect. Trained by Sean Terry, Future Pearl not only won this race last year, but his scintillating return to form in his penultimate start, along with an impressive run in the recent Grade 1 Hollywood Bets Durban July, sees him as the outright favourite. the field, nine to make up. Winchester Mansion, Oriental Charm. Flagman's running a big race, Royal Victory. Clet Louis running on, see it again on the inside. Trying to close in future swing. Flagman with an explosive the finish. Green with Envy's getting into it. And down the inside. Yes, Cousin Casey flying. Cousin Casey on the inside. Oriental Charm. Oriental Charm from Cousin Casey. Royal victories right there. And between runners flag, ma'am. See it again. Had to be eased at a vital stage. But it's Future Pearl has come through his July run really well. I thought it was an eye-catching run coming from last and finishing it off the way he did. Obviously, he loves the course and distance and has lots in his favour. He is giving a lot of weight away, but um, he's still reasonably well handicapped. Future Pearl carries 59 and a half and jumps from gate six with champion jockey Richard Foree. The Justin Snaith trained Future Swing won the World Sports Betting 1900 in his penultimate before lining up in the Hollywood Bets Durban July, where nothing went his way. We're just very unlucky. I mean, Richard got off. I've never heard Richard say this horse will never race again. That's how rough it was. Unfortunately, a horse went wrong in the race, and uh, Pierre was on see it again and had to manoeuvre, and um, we were like grey hair to Pierre. He just never left us alone. Um, in trying to get his horse into the right position, he just took us out, took, uh, even into the straight. I think Richard eventually just put his hands down. The horse was just done. We just we were rattled the entire turn. I don't think he would have. I, 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 his gallop wasn't that great into the race, to be honest. So would he have run a lot closer? I don't know. I don't know if I had him right. Uh, I don't want to make too many excuses in the running of the race, but for Richard to get off and say this horse will never race again, just to put in perspective, Richard's boots were cut. Um, very nasty, yeah. And as I said, just when Richard thought, okay, I'm going to get back into this race. Pierre took the run and just just before we came into the, the cut, cutaway rail, he just cleaned him. And I think Richard just said, a horse can't take this much. Yeah. Yeah. And he just he just said for his well-being and the horse's well-being to rather just hold him together mm -hmm. and just get to the finish line in one piece. So um, when we checked him out, he seemed fine. Um, he, was, he was just a little bit off, obviously, where he hit the rail. Um, but... Um, his work today was very good, to be honest. His, he stays every bit of the two miles. Settling him will be the challenge. Um, and uh, who knows what pace they'll go. I mean, Nostradamus, Nostradamus wouldn't predict what pace might happen here at Gravel. So it's very hard. Um, you just really hope that you just get a clear run. Maybe the, 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 the way to race at Gravel is to go to the front. It seems Humdinger, yeah. uh, <laughs> Brett's, uh, 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 Greg Bortz's horses, you know, go to the front, stay out of all the trouble. I just, we, we're really hoping that that Gold Cup day will be a little bit better. It was very rough. It's a lot to um, take uh, out of uh, out of a day. So if Future Swing gets a bit of luck in, in running and stuff like that, um, certainly a horse that you have to respect, uh, but it seems like it could be a bit of a tarry day. So we'll be, we'll be after him. Future Swing carries 56 and a half and jumps from gate 11 with Samanga Kumalo. Stable companion to the favourite is previous winner of the race and now seven-year-old Nabras. He put his hand up last time out. My lord, between runners, Madison Valley's trying to close in. On the outside, one-way traffic, it's a tight gap. Between runners, Madison Valley down the middle. Madison Valley, shoot the rapids. Nebras is running a cracker on the inside. One-way traffic's getting into it. The last hundred meters, Madison Valley, shoot the rapids. Madison Valley from shoot the rapids. Nebras third and maybe one-way traffic back in that fourth position. Nebras has had a lovely preparation for this race. He comes in with a good weight and a good draw. Gavin seems to get on well with him and I expect him to be competitive here. Nebras carries 55 and a half and jumps from gate five with Gavin Larina. 
The second of Justin Snake's coupling is one-way traffic. He's found the frame in his last two, which were both group races, but he doesn't appear to have the confidence of the stable. One-way traffic's getting into it. The last 100 metres, Madison Valley, shoot the rapids. Madison Valley from shoot the rapids. Nebras third and maybe one-way traffic back in that fourth position. He's shown very little for us here at home this season in Natal. His work is average. His runs have been average. I really hope that here maybe he he sparks something up. His work today was lethargic. It um, maybe this is the time that he might win because <laughs> normally he just blows us away and you think how far is he going to win by yeah. and it hasn't been like that for yeah. us. But stays so well. Got a good draw. Is it a good draw? Are we going to get taken out? It's hard to say. So um, we really just uh, hope he has a bit of luck in running. I'm very glad to see Keegan here. Keegan's a very consistent rider and um, he handles all the bullying at Gravel well. So he's the right guy for the moment. I think he's not, he's going to put the horse in the right position and uh, certainly a jockey that's riding so well in Hong Kong to have him here. You probably think he's an apprentice race. But um, he, uh, uh, I'm very, very happy to have him here. And I think all of us here in, in, in South Africa, nice to see the, the jocks coming back to their roots and, and, and making the effort to, to, to race here. One-way really? traffic carries 56 and a half and jumps from gate one with last year's champion jockey, Keegan DeMello. The first of another coupling in the race, this time Madison Valley for trainer Frank Robinson, won the Grade 3 DSTV Gold Bars from stable companion Shoot the Rapids. Madison Valley is in the all silks down the middle, while Shoot the Rapids has the black cap down the inside. Between runners, Madison Valley down the middle. Madison Valley, Shoot the Rapids. Nebras is running a cracker on the inside. One-way traffic's getting into it. The last 100 metres, Madison Valley, Shoot the Rapids. Madison Valley from Shoot the Rapids. Nebras third and maybe one-way traffic back in that fourth position. Yeah, look, obviously we were excited. Um, I thought a lot of the horse, that's why I ran him. And at the weights, I thought it'd be hard to beat. You know, if you look at his previous run, he beat a horse there by five lengths. He came out and won by five. And his work at home has always been very good. So I thought he'd have a chance, you know, at the weights. And obviously it worked out fine for us. How's he been since then? Funny if he gave very well yesterday. He looks like he may have come on a little bit. He's going to be up, at the weight, up in the weights now, but I still think he'll, he'll give a good showing. Draw and jockey? Yeah, Caden's riding him again. He's drawn in the middle, so he's got a bit of luck there. He can accelerate this horse, so you know, he doesn't have to be right on the pace. He can be just behind him. Madison Valley carries 54 and jumps from gate 7 with Caden Brewer. Frank Robinson also saddles Shoot the Rapids. I thought he is the better horse of the two, but he had four kilos more. If you look at his run, the Derby and Joburg and the group one was a very good run. He got left slightly, he ran on well. It was quite heavy the ground, he actually put up a good showing. He does stay very well. I think he'll be more suited to this trip than, than maybe my other horse. He'll stay all day, this horse, and he's tough. He's down now um, a kilo. He was drawn a bit wide, but I've got Muzi. Muzi's very good from wide draws, and he is a horse that you can place. He likes to use himself early, and I think he'll get in a decent position. All the best. We wish you a, a great day's racing. Yeah, let's have, have better luck. That's what we need now. Shoot the Rapids carries 54 and jumps from gate 15 with Muzi Yeni. Yet another coupling is from the stable of Dean Kanameya. In his first group outing last time, Master Fuego showed that there is still more to come when finishing third to Cape Eagle in the Grade 3 Splashout 2200. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a consistent horse and I think he's an improving horse. And I exposed him last run on July day in, in the um, in the splash at 2-2 yes. and we tried him with the distance for the first time he had 52 52 and a half and he's back and that was the most encouraging run the future is but there's many horses now putting on pressure Sundance scared Cape Eagle moves in Pomodoro's jet to the outside Ponte Pietro Mucho De Niro's running a big race on the outside Cape Eagle at the front Atticus Finch on the inside Mucho De Niro's burning up on the 
the outside, but it's Cape Eagle from Mucha de Nero. Atticus Finch the inside. Cape Eagle, though, will soar to glory. Atticus Finch second. Master Fuego third, and Mucha de Nero ran fourth. He stayed on well uh, on that day, so I decided to speak to Fred Crabby and I said, look, let's, I think I want to give it a go in the Gold Cup. Um, I know it's, it's 3,200 metres, it's extra 1,000 metres, um, and the race will tell if he stays or not. But he did stay on well in, on that day, on July day. Uh, he may be slightly out in the weights, um, but uh, he's, he's, he's a consistent horse, he's, he's sound, um, he's genuine, and uh, the race will tell if he, he stays or not. So, but you, you, know, you can't leave him out. Draw and jockey? Well, he's nicely drawn, you know, and Craig Zaki's won on him uh, all his races and so he knows him well. The last time Craig couldn't ride him because he had a lightweight moose, he rode him and rode him well. Uh, so Craig's all, all good, stable jockey on his back and, uh, you know, just uh, let's see if he stays the trip. My gut feeling is he will. Master Fuego carries 54 and jumps from gate 9 with Craig Zaki. Dean Canamea also sends out Ponta Pietro, who was somewhat unlucky in the Grade 3 Splash Out 2200. Yeah, Ponta Pietro stayed on well last time. Uh, also, once again, we're going to try him over 3,200 metres. He's out of a Galileo mare by Vercingetrix. Vercingetrix won up to 2,000 metres. So, uh, there's stamina there. Um, Sean rode him well last time because he's quite a tricky horse to ride. Uh, he sometimes can, he can grab the bit and, and you know, especially ease it up up front. Um, but he, he handled him very well last time. He was a little unhappy that allowed certain horses to come in and just affected his momentum. I don't want to make too many excuses, but he wasn't happy about that, Sean. And uh, he also stayed on all the way to the line. Uh, he's doing well, not a great draw, uh, but uh, it's always rough going into that first turn of the Gold Cup. Yeah. But he, he took his last one while he's doing well. And once again, the race will tell you he'll stay on, but it's got all the, it's got the pedigree uh, and the blood to, to, to go the trip. Competitive race this year? A Gold Cup, uh, yes, competitive race. Uh, but, uh, and it's also a rough run race. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you're always hoping that it's a clean run race going into that first and around that, you know, that turn into the back stretch. But uh, we look forward to it, and that's the end of the uh, champion season. It's been, uh, but it'll be a great race. Ponta Pietra carries 55 and a half and jumps from gate 12 with Sean Veal. Winner of the Grade 3 New Turf Carriers Western Cape Stayers earlier this year, Master Redoot, found himself caught up in the same incident that impacted Future Swing in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Not much went for him in the race. Um, we were pretty happy from his draw. We got into a nice position and uh, unfortunately a bit of a chain reaction of events through the 14 saw him pop out and obviously wasn't ideal for him and then I think also what was detrimental was the pace it, it probably wasn't as quick as what we were hoping for and uh, turned into a bit of a sprint and uh, he's not really that type of horse that's going to quicken up off a slow gallop. Um, he, he, we were hoping a, a testing uh, a July run would have helped him but uh, fortunately he's pulled up well and uh, that was the main thing and uh, like for where he finished it, it was probably as best as what he was going to get under the circumstances. It's going to be a bit more helpful for Cornet. He's better drawn now. He can place him into the race. Obviously, again, we're going to hope for some sort of gallop in the race. Um, and uh, like I say, he's come out the race well. Cornet galloped him uh, this past day, and he was very pleased with his grass work. So we haven't overthought things. He's fit and well, and uh, yeah, we're hoping for a much better run. Master Redute carries 58 and a half and jumps from gate three with regular jockey Cornet Orfa. The Candace Dawson trained Razor Hallelujah found the winner's box in his penultimate, confirming a return to form, having run second in the listed Lonsdale Stirrup Cup at Hollywood Bets Gravel in his previous start. Well done, but here's Razor Hallelujah. Razor Hallelujah gets to the front and won it. Second breeze over, then came Mumbo. Razor Hallelujah, he's doing really nicely at home. He's looking at picture and working really well. Shame, I think you can put a line through his last race because he obviously had nothing go his way and got into a lot of trouble. It's a quite a difficult field, but we're taking our chances, hoping to get some luck from the draw, and I'm sure he'll be running at them at the finish. Razor Hallelujah carries 54 and jumps from gate 13 with Cabello Mazzognani. Fifteen runners go to post in the Grade 3 Whirlpool Gold Cup. It's carded as race 7 and goes off at 16.10.